Hi, everyone. Uh, let me get my timer started so I can keep an eye on the time. Um, I'm so, so happy to be here today. My name is Ditya Narasimhan. Uh, this is actually my second All Things Open. I was there in person last year. It's one of my favorite conferences. So I'm really, really grateful to all of you who showed up. Um, as Noreen was talking about, my name is Nithya Narasimhan. I'm a senior a developer advocate, a cloud advocate in Microsoft. And I want to talk to you about dual screen and multi-posture and really how we can rethink the mobile app in the, in the kind of like, because of all these new design affordances that we get. Take a minute if you want to and just screenshot this. There are two links at the bottom. The first link will take you to the documentation repository for all things related to this talk. The second one goes to a blog post where after this um, talk and in fact, later in this week, I'll be putting up the slides, some resources and when the video is taped, I'll put that link up as well. You can always find me at Nithya on Twitter, but let's get started. So we are at an open source conference. Um, a little bit about me. My journey here has actually been through mobile in over two decades, but I wore many hats. I started out first in research and that's really where I fell in love with mobile. I was working in Motorola Labs. We were building out so many different unique mobile platforms. And what made mobile so amazing is this notion of seamless mobility. It's the one device that we take with us through every environment we're in. So kind of providing this use of this continuity of experience was amazing. And we built a lot of prototypes. Fast forward a few years and I started doing development work as a consultant and for startups. And I really wanted to scale. And it turned out that when you wanna scale, you really look at mobile web or you look at some things like cross-platform frameworks like Flutter where you can build once with one code base and have it deployed to multiple markets. A few more years later, I was using that experience to go teach people how to build their own first mobile app, both at university and in community. And I'm now a member of the advocacy team. And I'm here today because I'm really, really excited about one of the new devices that Microsoft just launched. It's called the Surface Duo, and we're gonna talk about it. So this is an open source conference. Why mobile? It turns out that mobile and open source are actually more synergistic than you might think. If you look at the, the graphic on the left, it comes from an IDC smartphones report. It turns out 85% plus of the global smartphone market is dependent on Android as the operating system. And Android is an open source mobile operating system. And it's actually the open source nature of Android that makes it possible for so many manufacturers, so many different ecosystems to take and adapt it in ways that make sense. On the right side is a graphic from GitHub's uh, state of the Octoverse report, which is really looking at what are developers learning today. And these are the fastest growing programming languages, according to GitHub. And if you look at the first one, which is Dart, and you look at the fourth one, which is Kotlin, those are actually fueled by mobile development. Dart is the language behind Flutter, and Kotlin is the now preferred language for developing Android apps. So today, my goal is really to kind of walk through this roadmap. Now, it looks very complicated, but it's not. This is not going to be a very code heavy talk, rather it's going to be a talk that walks you through the ecosystem and gives you resources so you can jump into code right after this if you're so inclined. First, the blue parts. My focus there is awareness. How do we talk about the terminology? What are foldable devices? Why should you care about them? Then we look at the green boxes. Let's talk about Android. What does the Android ecosystem provide for us to support foldable app experiences out of the box? Third, we're going to look at the purple boxes, and that is the Surface Duo. We're going to look at a concrete device and some of the things that you can do today to start exploring ideas to target this particular form factor. So first, let's look at the blue boxes. What are foldable devices? What are dual screens? Why should we care? So when we think about foldable, I really want you to think about foldability is about portability first. So you see two different animations. See on the left side is an animation that comes from the Android developer site. Right side is an animation that shows you the Microsoft Surface Duo. Both of these are foldable devices. On the left though, what you're really seeing is a foldable device. It's a single display using something called flexible display technology. And here it's a single screen that can fold and unfold. And when it folds, you're actually likely to be seeing a second screen on the outside that does something different. On the right side, you see dual screens, two screens side by side that are hinged together. Both these provide foldable experiences because you can fold the form factor, go from something that's the size of a phone that you can hold up to something that can open up to the size of a, la a tablet and give you an immersive big large screen display experience. The opportunity for us when you look at foldables is 
you can now rethink the user experience. What could you do if you didn't have to carry two separate devices, but one device can morph between these two modes? The challenge though is app continuity. What happens is the user is expecting when they go from fold to unfold and back again, that whatever they, did, they were doing should continue seamlessly, that you need to reorganize stuff, that you need to keep the state consistent. And that is hard. Next, let's ask what is dual screen? So if foldability is really looking at how do we kind of create these multi, multiple postures and fold them for different form factors, dual screen is really about productivity. How do I get two screens side by side and use them in a way that can give the user the best experience and the most productive experience in the current context? Some of the things you could do, side-by-side -side apps. You can have two different apps side-by-side. -side. Things like paired apps, we'll talk about that later. Drag and drop, but literally allow you to move context from one app to the other by dragging and dropping across screens. So the opportunity here is really in terms of the flexibility of the app experience. The challenge though, is now you have to think about two different things. First, when you have dual screen, as you can see in that, and you can see even in, I don't know if you can see that, that's a seam and the seam sits between right in the middle, which means that you need ways to kind of make your experience feel immersive without occluding any of the stuff that's there or hidden behind that hinge. Second is when you think about the challenges here, now you suddenly got way more configuration states. You can have be in landscape or portrait, you can be single screen, span left or right and you can have all those postures that's a lot of configuration states this is where operating system and device manufacturer built libraries and helpers can really come in handy so now we're going to move into the green boxes and let's talk about what android apps does for you in the foldable space so first the evolution of android and foldable devices if you look at it the first version of kind of like the con concerns and conversations around foldable happened in 2018 at the Android Dev Summit. It's the first time, and that was the year we started seeing the first flexible display foldable phones come out. And when you looked at that talk, you'll actually hear them focus on one specific thing, which is screen continuity user experience. In other words, Android is automatically set up so that when you move from one screen modality to another, you can, your app is able to reconfigure and build responsive layout. But you want to do that with the application developer's knowledge, or do you want to just kind of stop the app and restart it, right? So when they talked about it, they talked about having something called a, a flag, like something that lets you know that, hey, I want, I'm a resizable uh, app. Please let me know when you have folded on fold events and I'll handle them. So that's where they were. Fast forward a few months in 2019 in Google IO, they debuted and come kind of like a more comprehensive strategy. And the most important thing there was this notion of multi-resume. So in previous apps, you were able to have two windows on the same screen, but one of them would be alive at a time. But now they recognize that with dual screen, you could have two different apps or two different activities that were both active at the same time. So when you close and open the phone, both of them become alive at the same time. And that has kind of implications for state management. Fast forward to 2020, where we are now, and Android 11 just launched. With that also came this kind of like knowledge that there are more foldable devices, more manufacturers, more form factors. So it's no longer possible to just target like one or two things. We needed standard ways to even understand what are the device states, where are the display occlusions and so on. And we'll talk a little bit about that. So really, if we think about the evolution of Android for foldables, it went from Android 7, where we where we're really looking at multi window support. So single screen, multiple windows, and you can do things like drag and drop. You can do split screen, you can do picture in picture things that help stuff like Android TV. That's where we were in API 24. Fast forward to about a year ago and we had Android 10 and API 29 and the first foldable support came out. And we started seeing multiple screens and multi-display multi with the ability to have a resizable activity flag. And then right now where we are, we now have multi-configuration. So in addition to just kind of being able to say, I'll support this, now you're saying, hey, there are different kinds of configuration states. It's not just the number of screens, the size of the screen, it's the postures. And I wanna take a second to talk about the four postures that you see here, closed. So if I look at something like the dual, that's a closed posture. Then there is a flat one, which is fully open. There is something where I can hold it like a book, which could be half opened. And then there's something where I can turn it like this and put it down like a tent, right? And that would be flipped. So those are four standard postures that they thought about that could be kind of uniform across all device manufacturers. 
at the core as a developer, what do you need to think about? You need to ask yourself three questions. And this is actually super important if you're thinking of either building a new app or kind of refactoring your existing app to support foldable experiences. First, what was the user's intent when they folded or unfolded the device? That's super important. Why did they do it? They must have expected something to happen. So if they went from a phone mode to a tablet mode, maybe they were expecting that you would adapt and make the screen bigger, show them something more. What was the intent? Second, whatever experience you delivered to them, did it match the intent? And this is important because that means that as a developer, you also want to think about instrumenting your application to get this kind of data so you can understand if you met that expectation. And third, once you've gone past these two phases, what are the affordances you can use to deliver new and kind of interesting or um, surprising experiences to the user? So if you look at the Android space, and I'm going to talk about this in more detail in the Surface Duo slides later, but at the very high level, the Android uh, ecosystem gives you design guidance for foldables. First, always think about responsive layouts that as you go from fold to unfold, your app is automatically adapting, showing the right set of fragments and optimizing for the layouts that you have. Make sure that you're always keeping a consistent state so that if the user was in the middle of typing data into his form, when it goes from fold to unfold, you don't lose any of it as an example. Second, think about multi-window support. There's a resizable activity flag kind of use that to determine whether you want to handle those events or just kind of let them go and have the Android um, operating system basically start you up again. Use things like drag and drop because they're intuitive and very efficient in this ecosystem. Multi-display support. When you have dual screens, you can do things like launch an activity on the second screen if it's available. What could you do to create new experiences around that? Fourth, and we'll talk about in this next screen, testing. These devices are not ubiquitous, nor are they likely to be as cheap as regular phones. How can you go testing against this diversity of devices that are out there? We'll talk about emulators. And last but not least, most importantly, there are so many different kinds of apps out there. How, where do you even start? How do you get started designing your mobile experience to be optimal for these devices? So first, let's talk about testing. On the left side, you see an animation of the emulator that's available in the default Android Studio today. That animation, and you can kind of see that you can't see it too clearly, but you're seeing them click a certain icon on the right side on the emulator bar. And basically what that's doing is toggling between fold and unfold events. So you can see whether your application is running, adapting to those the way you expect it. So that's a very simple example. On the right side, you're seeing what the emulator actually looks like. And I'm running a different app in there. That's the, the photo editor app from the Surface Duo SDK samples. But what I wanted you to look at is what are the features available on the emulator, right? So you can now test against different orientations. So you can test how your app is kind of, whether the configuration changes you're making or handling work for fold unfold, orient orientation shifts, and potentially not yet, but you can't really look at hinge and all right now, but potentially that'll come down the line. When it comes to the Surface Duo emulator, you will be able to look at some of those in a custom emulator that we've got with our SDK. That'll give you a sense of what might be possible down the line. But bottom line with emulators is you no longer need to have a device. You have something that you can start with to just test that your application works on these foldable devices in a way that makes sense to you and to the user. But we need to go beyond this, right? In order for you to make your apps work, you first, A, need to know that you're on a foldable device. B, you need to know what the current state of the device is, in other words, if it's hinged, where is the hinge? Or if it's a, um, a flexible display, is there a fold area that I should be avoiding when I render things on the screen? If it is a foldable device, what is the current posture? What's the angle? How do I find all these out? And how do I know when those change? So it turns out that very recently, and all of these slides, when I put them up, you can actually click through on the links below. Um, there's a sample on the Android developers website. There's a post in, on Medium that walks you through it. But at the core, Jetpack, is their new extension libraries. And Jetpack now has a window manager API that abstracts some of this information, makes it accessible to you in a way that you can use uniformly or consistently across all foldable manufacturers, right? It's a single API. And what it really does right now is it gives you two things. First, it can tell you display features. Display features are nothing more than the rectangular bounds of areas on the screen that might not be uh, that might be disrupted, that you might want to avoid. For example, the location of 
the scene. The second thing it does is it gives you a device state. And that device state tells you, is this app in one of those postures we talked about, right? And the examples that you see are closed, opened, half opened, and I think it was flipped as you saw previously. There are a few discrete versions, but these will be provided for you consistently across all manufacturers. So this is what Android provides right now. Now let's talk about the Surface Duo. So in here, I kind of really want to um, inspire you to do three things. First, install the SDK, play around with it. In particular, it comes with its own emulator, so you can get a sense for what the emulated uh, experience for your default app looks like. So ex let's explore the emulator. And last but not least, I want to unpack the APIs, libraries, and design patterns so you get a jump start when you want to build a new app or adapt or refactor your existing app. So we're going to cover the purple boxes next. So what is the Surface Duo? So the Surface Duo is actually this device I have right here. It's a very unique device and it's actually pretty cool. It was launched in September of this year from Microsoft and it's the first Android powered device from Microsoft. As you can see, it's really thin. It is completely foldable. What makes it unique is it has a 360 degree hinge. So it not only opens this way, but you can fold it all the way around. And that gives you an almost perfect 360 degree rotation, degrees of freedom. It has two unique screens, two distinct and symmetric screens. So both displays are identical. And this is actually important if you are a person who likes building stuff for the enterprise. It comes built in with both N365, which is the productivity suite of apps from Microsoft, and Android Play Store access. So effectively, you can build apps that target two complete ecosystems of users. The link at the top gives you a lot of the tech specs if you're interested. But as a developer, you're probably asking, what do I need to know to develop for the Duo? It is an Android device, right? So does that mean I have to develop an Android? Not exactly. So if you're an Android developer, the Surface Duo has an SDK that uses Kotlin, which is the preferred language now, or Java, which has was for the longest time the preferred language. And you can start from there and build native apps for the Android device directly that go into the Play Store. Or if you want to explore cross-platform, and when you think about cross-platform, you're really looking at a framework that from a single code base will let you build both Android and iOS, or maybe even other apps like a desktop app perhaps by using, taking advantage of compilers and other libraries and support systems within that framework? Well, when you think about that, there, is, there are options like React Native, Xamarin, and Flutter. And the Surface Duo, if you go look at this SDK and samples, they actually do have a tutorial and existing libraries and samples that you can use to jumpstart building or exploring dual screen experiences using those particular frameworks. But it's, and with those, you actually still end up getting native apps you can ship in the market, right? But what if you wanted to try something different? There are actually two other um, documents or two other locations you can look at if you're interested in one of those particular domains. The first is if you are interested in using this for gaming. There is a sample that uses Unity, so you can explore using Unity to build uh, 2D games that might potentially take advantage of the fact of two screens. And as a long-time mobile web developer, this makes me super happy. There's also a sample that talks about kind of like very nascent support for dual screen uh, behaviors in JavaScript using CSS media queries. And I think it's called the Windows Segments API. But we have a sample, we have some guidance and somewhere for you to get started trying to build this. So those are your options. For now, we're gonna dive into mostly the Android stuff. So first thing you wanna think about is your configuration factors, right? So if you're an Android app, what are the possible configuration states that your app can be in so that you can respond to them? First, as I mentioned, this has a 360 degree hinge. That means 360 unique positions that you can get from an API provided by the Surface Duo SDK. Second, in addition for these very fine grained hinge positions, you can also get 16 discrete levels, which we call postures. And those 16 discrete levels, rather than give you degree by degree, are kind of like bucketed into broad areas, right? So there's things like this is a flat posture. This is kind of a peak, which is a very small uh, angle. This could be book. That's a tent and so on. There are, if you go look at the link in the docs, they actually list out the 16 post postures individually. In addition to that, the postures also depend on things like the orientation and one screen or two screen, right? So with that, you've got yourself a whole bunch of configurations that you can use to kind of respond in your app for events 
showing changes taken like that have been initiated by the user. But what's the default behavior? So this is how the duo works out of the box. If you're an application developer, by default, when your application is launched, it's launched just like any other Android app. It will open on a single screen. An app can then launch an activity. Once launched, that can then launch a second activity on the second screen if that second screen is currently available. If it's not available, then that as default behavior will basically launch on top of the existing one. A user can manually move an app from left to right screens. And in fact, you can derive some idea of whether you're on the left or right screen from some of the APIs available. And you can also potentially move things between left and right programmatically. If supported, you can have multi-instance apps. So basically, if you've enabled multi-instance apps, you can have two instances of your app running on either screen. And that allows you to do or take advantage of the dual screen without having changed your code, but potentially allowing two different screens of your app to show at the same time that might add value to each other. But the most important or most uh, unique feature is the one that I've highlighted in purple, and that is spanning. So spanning is when you take an app that's running on a screen, you're able to drag it to the center of the screen and let it go, and now it basically spans both screens. And in doing that, effectively, the app has adapted its layout to take advantage of both screens real estate. So we'll talk about some design patterns around that later. But in general, we're going to start by saying, take the general foldable guidance from Android. So use responsive layouts. We all know how to use them. Support all configurations. Remember all the different configurations we talked about. To the extent possible, at least have the ability to put in callbacks or handle those uh, events so you can know when the user put the device into that particular configuration. Collecting the data will help you identify what are familiar postures that users expect to keep your particular application in, and then perhaps ask what was their intent, and then customize your application experience to deliver against it. You can support diverse inputs. So while touch and type are default, the Surface Duo also comes with a pen, and there's a set of samples and an API for allowing you to work with pen events. Use drag and drop. Whenever you have side-by-side -side displays, it's way more intuitive for the user to kind of uh, transfer data or context from two different views, from one view to the other, by drag and drop rather than by type or touch. And in order for you to do that, you really need to understand how to kind of provide feedback to the user that the drag and drop feature is available and is currently in progress. There are samples to show you how to do that. But the most important thing that you want to take away from design guidance is learn user intent. Learn throughout, like instrument your app to understand why the user did what they did and then be, see what happens after those events to see if they continued on their path, the current workflow, they changed direction because you want to understand if you met that expectation. But let's come to the thing that's unique to the Duo and in fact, to foldable devices that have dual screens. And that is the scene. So as I mentioned before, in the Duo, you have the hinge. And because you have a hinge, you actually have this very visible seam in the middle. And you can look at this in here, you can see that from a distance, you, you can perhaps not pay attention to it, it looks kind of uniform because this is an image. But if you had certain things where perhaps the interactive button showed up in the middle, you might not be able to kind of have that um, a correct or consistent experience for the user. So what are ways in which you can deal with that scene? Here are some strategies. Strategy number one is do nothing. The first thing you want to do is if you're an Android developer, take the app that you have, run it in the emulator. Just run it as is and see what happens. It turns out that there might be some apps, and we look at design patterns like Extended Canvas later. For example, a map view, right, which is scrollable or has the ability to kind of slide out from under the scene, in which case you don't have to do anything to your app. It already can accommodate the scene by escaping from under it. Second uh, scene strategy is avoid it. So this is really specific to things like navigational uh, items, like if you have a drop down menu, if you have buttons, et cetera, that kind of have directionality. See if you can have them drop down or pop out in a direction away from the scene. Third strategy is snap to it. If you have a display element that can be um, assembled into columns like a grid, see if you can bring the unusable, like the middle of the, the grid, right, aligned with the seam. So if you have columns on either side so that the middle is really corresponding to the space between columns, then you're not going to have anything displayable there. Fourth and fifth are really um, kind of two ways of looking at things for rich media, right? So mask it says, hey, sometimes like 
the example I showed you, the human eye will connect the dots. If you're just looking at rich content, the human eye can kind of like make that seem invisible by understanding what could be underneath it as long as it's not critical. So it's an easy way for you to get around it. Splitting it is when the human eye can make out the difference or you need it to have something interactive, in which case you can tear that canvas apart into two different pieces, put them on either side. So these are all strategies. But the most important strategy to go towards is embracing it. What if you could rethink your user experience to make the seam feel like it was an organic part of the user experience and not an impediment? And we'll talk about design patterns around that. So let's talk about development. The guidance for development is very simple. Download the SDK, which comes with an emulator. Start by first testing your app on the default emulator. Make sure that it maybe requires work or not. Kind of like try the different orientations and figure out which places you need to fix to either improve the user experience or make sure that the default experience is not being impacted. Third, adopt some of the Android best practices for foldables just so you're bringing your app up to be uh, consistent across the entire family of foldables. And then start exploring device patterns for enhanced UX that could be specific to a particular device. So for the Surface Duo SDK, um, again, I'll put the slides out at that AKMS link that you see at the bottom, or you can go to the SDD Duo screen link and you can find a link to the Surface Duo SDK. Hugely, hugely promote that you install and play with it. Because what you get will be two things. And then the third thing I, I recommend you download is also the samples. So first thing you get with the SDK is obviously the libraries and APIs that you can use in your app to kind of take advantage of these behaviors. But the second thing you get is that emulator. And the emulator is kind of unique. We're going to talk about that in just a second. The third thing you also want to download is the SDK samples that will give you unique examples, code examples, for a bunch of design patterns as well as complete hero apps that you can potentially you know, uh, like reuse the code as is or reverse engineer to understand how you could do similar things for your app. So let's start first by looking at the emulator. This emulator is actually pretty cool. This is actually one of the most interesting things because not everyone can have an, a, a, a Duo device, right? So the first thing is, if you look at this, these are the various things you can test out on the emulator. In the first case, you see that little um, two screen interface up here. At the bottom, you see this little edge, like a, a little bar at the bottom. That is your span bar. If you pick that up and bring it to the middle of the screen as shown in the second image and then let it go, your single screen app will automatically be uh, put into span mode. And if your app had been refactored to support this kind of span mode by having a responsive layout or having different fragments and transitions, et cetera, that's what you will see. If not, by default, it's really, Android's just gonna resize it for that display area just like any other device. But you can simulate it on the emulator and see what your default behavior will be. But here's where it gets interesting. With the emulator, you can also test out configuration changes or change events for hinges. So you can either simulate the 16 discrete posture levels. To do that, they've overridden the humidity sensor that's available. And so you can just kind of put in zero to 16 and that'll trigger a hinge event, or you can go in and actually set the hinge angle between zero and 360. So that lets you test out both fine-grained foldable angles and coarse-grained postures. And last but not least, you've got the orientation. You can always test against portrait and landscape by default. So what kind of help do you have to get started? These are some of the libraries that come with the SDK. Um, Again, we're not going to be able to go into each of these in detail, but I want to give you a sense of what they contain so that you can go when we go to um, the samples, you have a sense of what they do. The first one is the core SDK. The core SDK is really there to provide you helpers to make you understand two things. One, you want to ask, am I on a Surface Duo? So that you can then make sure that you can only do things that are Surface Duo specific once you have checked that you're on one. But then you can use the screen helper to find out things like display information. Why, where is the seam? What is the current hinge angle? And so on. So you might be asking yourself, wait, isn't this sound like the Jetpack Window Manager API? And the short answer is Jetpack Window Manager API is a consistent um, API across devices that has been launched recently in alpha. So this existed before. And the Surface Duo team has already started supporting Jetpack. What you get is you can use the Jetpack APIs to get a, a consistent way across families. 
And then for other things that that doesn't provide, for example, the 360 degree micro hinges or the 16 discrete levels, you can still go ahead and use the core SDK. The second thing it does, it provides a screen manager that you can register with to be notified of these changes. So then you can adapt your apps to those changes on the fly. So that's the core SDK part. Next, the bottom navigation view. So one of the things that you'll see in Android apps is you have a bottom navigation bar where you can have different um, elements for navigating your app. Think about it, when you put an app into span mode, that navigation bar will now stretch to cover that entire area, which means there might be buttons on it that get hidden under the scene. So the surface do a bottom navigation view, you can take advantage of a helper view class that automatically will move those elements either to one screen, the left screen or the right screen, and make sure that way that they're all accessible when you span. The fragments handler does something slightly different. So when you think about your application, you've got two different views, right? You have like in a, when it's folded, you have a single screen activity view. And then when you're unfolding it, you are going from that single screen to some dual screen view spanned, or perhaps you're doing something else, right? And you want that app to transition from one to the other, from the one screen experience to the two screen experience and still maintain its state. You'll probably end up using fragments. The fragment manager state handler provides you a helper that manages this for you. So you effectively can register the kinds of fragments you want in the start and end of these transitions. And it takes care of you know, checking for those events and making sure the transition happens uni uniformly. Last but not least, we talk layouts. So the navigation view was just one view element, but what if you wanted to have a layout, a container into which you can put your views to handle it in one screen or two screen mode? So Surface Duo has Surface Duo layout. There's a frame layout. There's also a tab layout that I didn't mention here. All of these are default layout views that you can use to jumpstart your development that already have a sense of registering for these changes and knowing how they happen. How can you use them though? And this is where design patterns are useful. So design patterns, every one of these comes with a code sample. So if you really want to know how to use them, you can dive in, look at the code sample and start from there. But the purpose of the design pattern is to give you this broad kind of, hey, if you have this kind of app or this kind of activity, try using this pattern, right? And there are five that the team has actually identified by not just trying out different things, but by talking to a bunch of users and developers to figure out what makes the most sense. We're going to go through these five in step by step. And in each one of them, we're really going to think a little bit about the seam strategy. So in the first case is the extended canvas app. The extended canvas app is really useful if, you are, if your default app experience is something that's drawing on the whole screen, like a canvas, right? So in an extended canvas app, your, your sample app basically, when you put it into span mode, is now spanning across the whole region. And your amount of change should be minimal it should actually be able to take advantage of the real estate. Your seam strategy is to do nothing. The Canvas app might be scrolled to kind of expose those the occluded regions, think like a map view. And the example, the sample app that you have shows you how to do this with the frame layout and a map view. So you can start there. The second design pattern is list detail. This is one of the most popular patterns when you start Android development, right? With list detail view, you have basically a collection of items in a list. And when you click on any of those items, you want to have it launch an activity that shows you the details of that, that particular item, right? So you have two views. And by default, when you're in single screen mode, the detail view comes on top of the list view. And then when you dismiss it, you go back to the list. In the foldable design pattern, you want to take advantage of the fact that when you span this, now you have additional real estate. Why not literally then have the list view on the left and the details on the right? And this shows the usage of the Surface Duo layout which is kind of one of our uh, helper layout libraries and the screen helper, the core library that kind of lets you check. It's a great place for you to start figure out how do I know I'm in Surface Duo? What is the hinge angle? What is this? What, am I in dual screen mode and so on? The seam strategy here is really about splitting it, right? You're using the seam to clearly tell the user there are two different areas that do something interesting. Next, we're gonna talk about two page. Two page apps are really, uh, think about anything that's paginated data. You might be making a query to an API. You might be reading a book. You might have a large volume of data that you're paginating through. What you want is a book-like experience that you can kind of like scroll through those pages seamlessly. And one of the unique things you want this to do is take or be aware of the fact that as they rotate between you know, uh, landscape and portrait, your scrolling direction might also change. 
So this particular two page sample and this design pattern is very useful when you have paginated data and you wanna be able to kind of have that familiar page turning experience for the user. The same strategy here is embrace it. You're literally now showing each page on a separate screen. One of the beauties of this is as this page moves to the left side and a new page comes in, you kind of see the continuity, right? The last two patterns are actually to me the most interesting. The first one takes advantage of the fact that you have two different screens to create two views of the same information that might be in some sense complementary or enhancing to the user. So in this particular case, you might show a text version of the data on the left and a map view on the right. And the thing about dual view is these two views are kind of kept in sync, right? So if I were to pick another item on the left, the map should reor reorganize itself to show you where that is and so on. This is a great way to show coordinated content experiences. Think of this as maybe a shopping experience where the right side is the cart and the left side is what I'm actually browsing right now. Or even as I browse, it shows me discounts and recommendations on the right side. Think of ways in which you can surface content that's in your app that you wouldn't see otherwise, as long as there are two views. This is really, really, in my opinion, very good for things like accessibility. What if I could show you a view that is kind of like text in one side and a visual view on the other. So it's a com compare and contrast perspective. The companion pane, which is the last pattern we'll talk about on the other hand, is really about augmenting your content experience. In the other one, if you were having synchronized experiences, here it's like recognizing I have extra real estate. I have so many other things I could have shown. What if I elevated things that were hidden and use the real estate to make them visible? Could be a second level menu item. It could be additional controls as shown here and so on. So the same strategy again here is you are really enhancing that you are embracing it and using it to clearly delineate additional things that came about because you were in span mode. So I hope those were interesting, but one of the nice places to start, if you just want to explore reverse engineer, reverse engineer, try it out and emulate, et cetera, is to try one of the hero apps. On the left side, there's a source editor, and these are the different things that you can explore if you're interested in it. It has a drag and drop pattern, single screen mode, dual screen mode, and mirrored scrolling. The right side, you have a two note app that shows drag and drop, shows you how to use pen events, and uses the list detail and extended canvas patterns. And with that, I'm kind of at the end of my talk almost, hopefully I'm on time. Um, all of these resources, when I put the slides up at that link below, um, I'll be able to kind of give you specific links to each one of them. The thing that I really want to emphasize is download the SDK and use the developer blog. The Surface Duo developer blog has a ton of tutorials that, and there's one coming out almost every week that show you how to try out these design patterns for various front-end frameworks, not just Android, but also web and Xamarin and Flutter. And um, I think they even have a Unity sample on there. So with that, let me recap what we talked about. My goal today was really to get you excited about this new realm of foldable devices and the kinds of experiences. How can we rethink the mobile app experience for these devices? So first, hopefully at the end of this talk, you understood that when you think about dual screen and multi-posture, postures, displays, and seams, that whole area of foldables is focused on productivity and portability. When you think about the Android user experience, the, sorry, the developer experience, what the real concern is, what are the different app layouts we can use to be responsive? What are, how do we ensure that device states are known and that uh, there's a continuity of app experience as we go from one state to the other? And then on the Surface Duo side, what we covered are, how can you test your app for the Surface Duo? There's an emulator for that. What are the libraries and APIs that are available to help you kind of jumpstart using the Surface Duo's capabilities? We looked at some examples of code. Then we also looked at the affordances. What are the 360 degrees of hinge angles that go above and beyond what the standard consistent APIs provide you? What are the 16 consistent states? What is new capabilities like spanning? And we looked at five design patterns that can help you jumpstart either refactoring your app or building a new one. Last but not least, the links at the bottom, there is a forum you can go to to post any questions, share your own apps, or if you get stuck or run into an error, reach out to me or you can post on those forums over there. And with that, thank you so much for listening. I hope I didn't exceed my time. Um, I have, I don't know if I have time. I probably don't have time for questions, but I do want to point out that there's another AKMS link to All Things Open AMA. 
Um, the Microsoft team has a virtual booth at this event and I'll be joining them shortly. We have a link, that link there will take you to a Teams chat and I'll be hanging out for the next 30 minutes. If you wanna talk about anything in the mobile development space, I'd love to see you there. And thank you. Nitya, you actually have a few minutes if you want to take us. Uh, oh, thank you. Oh, questions. my God. All right. So, yes, if anyone has questions, I'd love, love, love to take them. And if you um, let me see if I can actually even show you what the emulator looks like, if this is of interest. So um, while I'm waiting for questions, that is, if I can pull up an emulator, I might be able to uh, show you what that looks like. Yeah, so, but I can't see the chat right now. Does anyone have any questions? I don't see any. Uh, let me see if I can run that and show that to you. In the meantime, if we have a couple of minutes. All right, so you can actually see that emulator right now. Uh, do you all see that screen? Noreen, do you see a screen with a, yeah. So that's actually the Android emulator and you can see that almost all the different um, code samples are available as well. So let me basically see if I can do, um, this is the source editor hero app. So if I can pick this up, sometimes it works and sometimes it's really slow. So this is how you span it. So when you're using the emulator, you can basically drag and drop it in the middle and you can now see what the span effect looks like. And now you can see that when going from single screen to dual screen, you actually had a different experience. Uh, there is also a bunch of uh, the, the different patterns that we talked about. So here's the extend canvas app. So you can see that when I span this, this now allows you to drag and drop things so that you can actually work below the scene. Uh, you don't have to worry about occlusion. Let's see if we can look at the companion pane. So the companion pane app, oops. Expand it up there. So the companion pane app, you can see that now I can take advantage of the fact that I have a single um, like view of something on the left side and I have a different view of it on the right side that I can take advantage of. The list detail view on the other hand allows you to take advantage of a collection here that if I were to span it, will now show me the list and details view side by side. Ah, okay, there we go. So now if I switch, go from item to item, I can actually see the list and details view side by side. And what was the last one? The two page app. So this is very much like a Kindle experience. If you have paginated data, this is something I'm working on for a tutorial, but you can see that now I can actually scroll it back and forth and it works out pretty uh, neatly. And the example that you were seeing was the photo editor that is, so all of these, the samples are available for you to kind of play with um, and in fact, if the link that you see in that's the SDD hyphen dual hyphen screen, you will see not only the samples links, but um, samples for tutorials for the web and for Flutter as well. Yes, the emulator question, do we need to code an app specifically for Surface View or Arts? Yes. Oh, this is such an easy question. Um, yes, so remember I was talking to you about the screen helper APIs and I don't know if I can actually drag the docs over, but the screen helper API, let me actually show you the thing I was talking about here. So when you look at the, the helper libraries that we have here, when you look at, let me move that over here. When you look at the SDK libraries that we have, the screen helper and surface do a screen manager. With the screen helper, you literally have a method you can invoke called is surface duo. I think it's called is surface duo that will return true if you are on a device that's a surface duo. So what I tend to do is in, in my on create, I literally first check if it's surface duo and then kind of like scope all the surface duo specific calls within that. But you can also register, you can like do that, not just on create, but you can also register to be notified of those events when, if and when they change after, yeah. Do we need to code an app specifically for the Surface Duo or can it run to unlock the features? So the, the thing I also wanna say is don't make your app specific to the Surface Duo. What you wanna start is really look at the generic emulator and make sure that your app works on a generic foldable device so that you're optimizing for that entire family. Then add in the little hook that says, am I on a Surface Duo? And that can allow you to do more enhanced things that take care of. So for example, on the generic module, you might only know about four states for the hinge. On the surface view, you get 16 postures and 360 degrees. 
So that might allow you to do something more, but if you're not on a Surface Duo, you still want to target your foldable experience for like, I don't know, a Samsung device or other, that allows you to kind of fall back. Let me see if there are any other questions. Um, did that help Marcelo? And thank you for asking. Yeah, okay. And I think that was all there was. I don't know if there are any other questions. I don't think so. May I ask a quick question? Sure, sure, go for it. Yeah, this is amazing. This is great. I love it. So if do current apps just work or I, I don't know if they have to recompile or rebuild or I'm just curious what. Oh, you have to. So. This was an entry level talk, but I'm actually going to be doing another step-by-step -step tutorial in my kind of next round of talks. You have to set up your Android project with the right Gradle configuration files. So you have to basically make sure that you are putting a dependency on the SDK and importing all the different modules that you need to use. So you do have to A, first, so the strategy usually is take your existing app, do nothing, just run it on the emulator, do nothing, just run it on the emulator, on the SDK emulator and see what's happening take notes of where you think, oh, this could be a better experience than what I'm seeing. Then include those dependencies, include the specific libraries you want. What I advise is start first by just adding the core SDK or the window manager API and just saying, I want to know that I'm on a foldable. And when I'm on a foldable, try one very simple, small thing, one of the simple strategies for scenes. So maybe if you are building a canvas app, try to put it into a scrollable frame and see if you can move out from under it. Does that help, right? And then kind of incrementally work your way up. But yeah, you absolutely have to, you have to rebuild, but you also have to scope your changes so that you're not going to break it on devices that don't support foldables. 